I am so pleased to finally have been able to plant my beans out because they've been living in the car and I've been taking them out during the day and moving them back in at night. And it's just been way too windy to plant them out. And if I would have, the wind would have absolutely shredded them and it would have been pointless. So they're out now, they're on their new structure. What do you think of it? I think it looks pretty neat. And I thought it's a good time that we could talk about this transition and mindset that we have right now at this time of the year. So it's less about taking care of seedlings at home, which we will continue to do, but we're adding some more tasks. So we need to plant seedlings out in the garden. We need to support them in the right way. So supporting them so that they can climb and also supporting them so they don't blow down in the wind and also protecting them from predators because we know that there's gonna be rabbits and birds and slugs and all kinds of things that are gonna be after our crops. I'm Tanya from Lovely Greens. Let's go have a look at some of my setup. Before we move on, let's go have another look at that pea and bean dome frame. And this is from a company called Gardening Naturally. And if you ever see any metal hoops or netting or anything like that in my garden, it's most likely from that company based in Britain. And this is a metal based frame that I put together. It wasn't too difficult. And it has hessian string as a netting, which is clipped on and I've also tied it on as well to make sure that it's extra strong and it's going to stay put and the beans are all planted down here at the base and so they will climb up and then I'll be able to go inside and from either side to pick beans later on in the summer. Now I originally put this together over where you see that white fleece there but I realized it was not the right place for it because the prevailing wind is coming down the glen there and we've had some really windy days recently. It stood up in it, but it probably wouldn't be best for my beans to get that kind of brunt force of the wind. So hopefully the wind will go through this now and the beans will be a little bit more protected. So what I have down here is I've got one single Borlotti bean that germinated from seeds that I was given. And then I've got lots of French beans and it's a type called Cobra, and they're on either side here. And then I have four runner beans, and there's a different, uh, there's a few different varieties in here. So there's, I think, Scarlet Emperor, and there's Pole Star. And then down here at the end, those are Achoka, and that is a South American climbing vegetable, which is very unusual, and it's a great alternative to growing sweet peppers outdoors here in Britain. I have a lot of fruit and berry bushes here on the allotments and as you know one of my favorite is strawberries and I have a couple of things here to protect the developing berries and I see loads of red berries in there by the way we'll get to those in a sec first of all straw so I've got straw down here on the ground underneath the plant and that's protecting the berries from the ground so what's wrong with the ground it can be damp there could be slugs and snails there so the straw will lift the berries up and protect them from all of those different kind of worries on the ground. And I presume that the straw and strawberries is from the straw because it is traditional to use that. This is a little bit more modern and slick, I think. It's the same kind of aluminium metal that you saw with the pea and bean dome frame. Very easy to put together, very lightweight, and it fit perfectly over my bed custom made so that's also from gardening naturally and you can pick various sizes and over it I've stretched this bird netting and it is soft and it will allow bees through to pollinate but it will keep birds out and it's also a soft material that decreases the chance of them getting caught in it so I say let's have a look to see how many strawberries we can pick let's just lift the netting up just held down by these pegs so you can get underneath pretty easily and then reattach it oh, and we're inside <laughs> look at this 
Strawberry City. Oh my gosh, look at how big this one is. Wow. You can't see them from there, but there are all kinds of little bugs against this veggie mesh. And this is also a product from Gardening Naturally and it's to actually exclude one of the biggest problems that we have for carrots here, and that's a carrot root fly. And if you come across carrot root fly damage in your carrots, you know it because they are riddled with holes, they are inedible, and it's such a bummer at the end of the year because they look healthy from above, they've got green leaves and all of that, but below ground, they're just being eaten by carrot root fly larva. Now the trick to keeping the fly off is first of all to weed at the end of the day. So as the carrot root fly are kind of calming down and going to sleep for the day or avoiding thinning at all. And then also using veggie mesh to exclude them. And you can either lie it on top, which I've done in the past, but you can also put it up vertically and this will allow the foliage of the carrots to grow really tall, but it will keep the carrot root fly out. And the trick is that the carrot root fly only flies about 18 inches from the ground. And so with this being so much taller, it'll keep it out. It's actually a really simple setup and it's made out of these aluminium poles, which you just ram into the ground and then you wrap the veggie mesh around and then hold them together with these clips and you can adjust it. And I've gone ahead and I've put some rocks along the bottom just to make sure they're not going to come through and look at all the insects. Can you see those? They're not getting through. And I am sure that some of those will be some carrot root flies because I did actually do a little bit of thinning in here and they can smell the scent of carrots from miles away. And that's why you avoid thinning too much. Now in here, I've got several rows of carrots and I'm growing some purple carrots this year, some traditional orange ones, and also the uh, ruby prints, which are gorgeous carrots. Now, I love the aluminium hoops and all of the high quality setup that I have with the strawberries and the carrots and everything, but I also make my own structures as well. And they're a little bit higgledy-piggledy, but they do work. The important thing is to have good quality netting over it. And this is butterfly netting, and it's also from Gardening Naturally, and it's much smaller than the bird netting, so insects like butterflies can't get through and that's important because the cabbage white butterfly would love to get inside here lay its eggs on all of my cabbages and brussels sprouts and kaolettes and allow their little larva to munch them all to nothing but that's not going to happen because i have this netting up here and if you look closely around the base of each one of these plants i've put a little bit of landscaping fabric and those are just DIY collars to keep the cabbage root fly from laying their eggs at the base of the plants as well. And that's another one that will destroy your plants. And it really shows that you do need to get to know your pests in your area because if you take the precautions by excluding them, then you can protect your crops without having to sacrifice very many of them or having to go out and kill them. Exclusion is always the better way. Here at the allotment, we do have pheasants and rabbits, which are a nuisance. And I do find that just simple netting like this does work to keep them out. But there are more determined rabbits out there and they will dig under. So if you have problem rabbits in your garden, what you might need to do is put up a fence that's at least three feet tall and it should also go into the ground a good couple of feet. And if you get snow in your region and you want to keep bunnies out indefinitely, you might want to even make your fence a little bit taller. Last year, I grew my potatoes under that same butterfly netting. And that was not to exclude butterflies, but to exclude pheasants. And strangely enough, they are a problem early on in the year here, especially if you're doing no-dig potatoes. They're just so easy to dig up, especially for pheasants. So this year, I took a chance by not netting my potatoes, but then again, I didn't grow them no dig this year. They're just in a traditional bed here. And I've actually been earthing them up and they need another earthing up very soon. Look at all the foliage. Oh my goodness, we are going to have so many potatoes this year. It's gonna be amazing. 
and I can see that some of them are starting to form flowers. And these are the first earlies, and as soon as those flower, that means it'll be time to dig those guys up. You can really see how the wind bashed in this comfrey. The bees are all over it, and it's not a big deal. I'll cut it down, I'll make it into fertilizer and mulch, and it will regrow. But if that wind had come when my dahlias were much larger, it would have been a bigger problem. And so that's why I'm starting to use these willow panels. And the idea is that they are a non-solid surface that will break the wind coming from this prevailing direction down the glen. And so the dahlias and the oka that are on the other side and the squash, they'll get a little bit of protection from the wind and also some of the herbs I have planted here too will appreciate a little bit of extra shade. I can see that most of the blueberry bushes along here still have flowers on them, but this little guy is just covered in berries. So with the flowers, they do benefit from pollination, but once they have a full load of berries on their branches, they're gonna start ripening soon, and these are gonna be a real target for birds, especially pheasants, and I've actually lost entire crops of blueberries to them before. But a trick to keeping them off is to put veggie mash, so that same stuff for the carrot root fly, over your berry bushes after they have all their berries. So this guy, no flowers, totally safe. And all I'm going to do is gently wrap the entire plant with veggie mash and then secure it with string. And this is a really clever trick because the veggie mash allows air to get in and it breathes and it doesn't get too warm, but it also saves those berries from being targeted by birds. The other great thing about the veggie mash is you can look through it easily and you can see if there are any ripe berries. And then at that point, you undo the bow tie, unwrap the plant, pick your berries, wrap it up again and away you go. Now we've spoken about rabbits and birds and carrot root fly and butterflies, but what about deer? Now deer, are not something that I have to contend with here on the island. We're pretty isolated and there are no deer here. There's no moles, foxes, badgers, snakes. We're free of all of those, so I don't have to worry about them. Although we do have wallabies, <laughs> so strangely enough, yes. And there was one actually across the glen just last week. Don't even ask. But anyway, back to deer. If you have deer coming and munching your plants, you probably want to consider putting up some deer fencing and some really tall fencing to keep them out. Now, I don't have that here for obvious reasons, but my friend Aaron in the States does have a great setup that will keep deer out, and I encourage you to go and check out her channel and get some ideas for your own deer proofing. Well, it's been a beautiful day, and I've shown you various ways of how I protect and support my crops here at the allotment site. <laughs> And it could be from wind and weather or from various animals and insects. But by using the right netting and the right supports, by excluding animals to begin with, you can really start protecting your plants without hurting the environment. And almost everything that I use in my allotment now is from gardening naturally. And if you're in Britain, I really do encourage you to take a look through their catalog. And if you want anything, you can place an order and use the discount code GREENS to get 10% off. And that's a really great deal. Now, if you have any questions about your own garden, so any particular pests or challenges that you face, leave me a comment down below and I'll get back to you or someone else will have that same problem and be able to respond to you as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time here on Love the Greens. Bye for now. One last thing before you go, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe to Lovely Greens and click that little bell icon so that you get notifications for when new videos are out.